ஹாய் ஹலோ வணக்கம் அண்ட் வெல்கம் பேக் டு எட் அனதர் எபிசோட் ஆன் லெட்டில் ஸ்லா யூடியூப் சேனல் ஸோ டுடே இன் திஸ் வீடியோ வி வில் சி அபவுட் ஹவு இம்பார்ட்டண்ட் ஆர் வாய் இஸ் இட் இம்பார்ட்டண்ட் டு டெஸ்ட் எஸ்பெஷலி பர்ஃபார்மன்ஸ் டெஸ்டிங் தி பேட் ஜாப் இன் டேர்ம்ஸ் ஆஃப் நான் ஃபங்க்ஷனல் டெஸ்டிங் பிகாஸ் ரீசெண்ட்லி ஐ ஹவ் காட் லாட் ஆஃப் கொஸ்டின்ஸ் ஃப்ரம் சம் ஃப்ரம் அ சப்ஸ்கிரைபர்ஸ் அண்ட் ஃப்ரம் அதர் பீப்புள் ஆஸ்கிங் ஃபார் ஹவு டு டூ the performance testing for bad jobs so in this video we will discuss about the crucial aspects of why should we do the performance testing for bad job and in our next videos we will see how to do performance testing of bad jobs so if you have not subscribed to our channel yet please don't forget to subscribe to our channel for for more informative and interesting videos and now with no further ado let's go to the video so the first thing is performance testing of bad jobs is crucial in non functional testing for several reasons the first reason is efficiency and optimization so performance testing helps us to identify the inefficiencies in bad job execution so by measuring the time taken for different job sizes we can pinpoint the areas where optimization is needed and it is very important for a performance engineer to pinpoint the areas or where the optimization is needed so this ensures that the bad job runs efficiently and completes within acceptable time frame so that's the very first reason to do the performance testing for optimization uh, for the bad job so which is the efficiency and optimization and the second one is the resource utilization so bad jobs often process large volumes of data which we all know so they process large volumes of data and their performance can impact the overall system resources so performance testing helps to evaluate the resource utilization of bad jobs ensuring they don't excessively consume the memory the cpu or any other resources which can affect the performance of other applications running on the same system so that's the main the top priority for performance testing of bad job which is the resource utilization so the third reason to test the bad jobs is the scalability assessment so bad jobs should be designed to handle increasing workloads and performance testing assesses the scalability of bad jobs and this is to determine whether they can efficiently process large amounts of data without significant degradation in performance and this is especially important as the data volumes grow over time because we all know in any industry that we work the bad jobs which is the data volume grows day by day the day one if we are running a bad job with 100 mb of data by the end of the year it would be around 100 gb of data where we would be doing bad jobs because in the current environment in the current information era everything is data so we keep on or the data keeps on increasing the data keeps on growing so the scalability assessment is the top priority again so everything which we are going to discuss today is the top priority and it's going to be the main priority but again when comparing to the data growth yes so the scalability assessment is an important aspect when it comes to the performance testing of bad jobs and then the second the fourth one is the predicting of system behavior or to be predict the how the system behaves so understanding how bad jobs perform under different loads allows us to predict their behavior in a production environment so this information is essential for capacity planning and ensuring that the system can handle anticipated workloads without compromising performance because when we are testing the bad jobs in a lower environment or in a production like environment the behavior will be different so this testing in a lower environment will give us a prediction on how will this behave in a production environment because most of the times we would see the bad jobs fail in the mid middle of its execution and that will ruin the entire business so to avoid all those 
issues we must make sure the bad jobs runs fine without any errors and that in fact it should not be triggered due to any of the other related issues so that's why we are even checking out the resource realization and, and it is again very important to test because the predicting of the system behavior is again a high priority for us to understand while doing the batch job testing so the fifth one is meeting the SLAs or meeting the service level agreements so many systems have SLAs that define the maximum time allowed for batch jobs to complete we all have the SLAs that it, if it starts at 1 a.m. in the morning, it should be completed by 1.30 a.m. because the moment it completes the next day, the, the business for the next day begins. So we all have an SLA that this should be, this should not actually take a lot of time. This should be completed within less span of time because by the time the system maintenance goes and by the time the system comes to the live, all the bad jobs should be completed and we should be ready for the next day business. So the performance testing helps verify whether bad jobs meet these SLAs and ensuring that data processing occurs within specified time constraints. So that's again a high priority, which is to meet the SLAs and to make the business running all the time. So the sixth one is the identification of bottlenecks. So we all know performance testing often helps us to identify the bottlenecks or areas of contention within the bad job or the overall system architecture. So identifying and resolving these bottlenecks is crucial for achieving optimal performance. So we should identify the bottlenecks and that's the priority or that should be your objective of doing the performance testing for the bad job. So we have to identify the bottlenecks. And next comes the user experience because bad jobs you know they often contribute to the overall user experience by indirectly ensuring timely data processing because there will be no any manual intervention and they are automatic so if the bad jobs perform poorly they can impact the responsiveness of associated applications leading to a negative user experience so to avoid that we have to do a performance testing and make sure everything works fine. And next comes the reliability and stability. So the performance testing includes stress testing, which is part of the performance testing of the bad jobs, which assesses how bad jobs perform under extreme conditions. So this will ensure that the bad jobs can handle stress and recover gracefully contributes to the reliability and stability of the overall system. Because during a bad job, if something goes wrong or if some failover happens, the bad jobs should handle the stress and they should recover. They should be resilient and they should come back gracefully to the stable state of the overall system. So that's another aspect which we have to test. That's the reliability and the stability and next comes the cost efficiency because cost is always an indirect proportion but again it's a top priority so the cost efficiency so efficiency and when it talks talking about the efficiency so we have to efficiently perform the bad jobs which contributes to the cost efficiencies by minimizing the resource required for processing and this is particularly important in cloud-based environments where resource consumption directly impact cost. And we all know nowadays every organization are moving towards cloud. So this is again a high priority when it comes to cloud-based applications because it's very important in again in cloud-based environments where resource consumptions directly impact the cost. The budget, again I would say the budget is most important. And then finally, the compliance and governance. So in some industries, there are regulatory requirements or internal governance standards which are related to data processing times. So performance testing of these bad jobs will help us to ensure that we are compliant with these standards. So these are the top 10 aspects of why do we need to performance test bad jobs. So in summary, I'll just give a final uh, an overview or summary of the performance testing of bad job. So it's very essential for optimizing the efficiency 
ensuring the scalability, predicting the system behavior, meeting the SLAs, the service level agreements, and enhancing the overall reliability and user experience of a system. Again, this performance testing of bad jobs plays a critical role in non-functional testing to validate the performance aspects of a batch processing system. So in the next video, we will see how to set up a batch process and how to do a testing of the batch process in Windows environment. So until I meet you in another interesting video, it's bye-bye from Asin Shanmugam and Little Slaw.